I'm Joe Darlington from Being James Bond, and with me... I am David Zeritsky from The Bond Experience. What's happening, partner? You know what? I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. It's spring yeah. is in the air, yeah. and, and you're back yeah. for another discussion. Absolutely. What, what are we doing here today? Yeah, what's this one about? So we did, let's see, we did... Should we go back to the original theory? The, yes, the, uh, yeah. What do we... A little refresher? Uh, a couple of years ago now, too. Oh my gosh, it is. It's at least two to three oh years. Uh... We had a conversation where I kind of made an off, off, off the cuff comment about how I think all the first films of each actor are the best because reasons, and then it kind of went from there. We decided, well, does that mean that the last ones are they always the worst? Could be. And then we then we looked at the third films where we, we said did. the third is kind of where they hit their stride. Yeah. And then uh, I kind of had another brainstorm for for lack of a better. Uh, uh, I said, you know what? Sometimes I find that the second films. Kind of hit that sophomore slump. That's exactly how you said it, too. Yeah. Sophomore. Mm. Yes. Yeah. The sophomore effort usually kind of slacks a little bit. Where, I, 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 like, the first one, good. Yeah. And then they're kind of not sure where they want to go next. And and suddenly, they just put out a movie and whatever. So... Yeah, like, the whole thing of, like, The Empire Strikes Back yeah. doesn't really have legs right because it's right. one of the few where it's like may have actually improved on the original movie right but you're hard yeah. pressed to say what else is there out there exactly yeah right so yeah so that's the question we're going to look at the second films for each actor and yeah. and because uh we're, we're we're talking about four actors this time right who, who can't do who lazy me again do, right can't do george again can't do tim dalton again can't do timothy dalton again because we did his first and last yeah so we got him covered so we've got four films that we're going to talk about that again are the are the number twos are we actually sitting in front of the first I one we're going to we talk are. about is it what? possible oh my god here we From go with love here we go we're off and running good luck with this one <laughs> this yeah 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 well, here's you know here's the thing. It's funny as we've been doing these series. I feel like every time we do one, every right. time we we do a first, last, whatever, mm -hmm. I find that I always have trouble when we talk about the Conneries because we're kind of in the golden age of Bond. I sort of feel like this is where yeah. it, it's it kind of is one solid at least the first four. It's like the first is it's a good solid chunk of just pure James Bond. You know, pure unadulterated. And I, I I think maybe with the exception of Diamond to Forever, which we should have agreed was not the not such a good not the finale, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the other ones have been pretty tricky, and and I think this one is going to be especially so. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll I'll say this too, I think of all the films, possibly I think this might be the only film that I think honestly I can't recall any fan criticizing this film. For any reason, I can. I, I, I've had people say to me, <laughs> okay, I've had people say to me, you know, for much with love, yeah, it's good. It just doesn't grab me like some of the other ones. I know a lot of people like it. Right. It doesn't grab me as as it as it grabs some. But I've never heard a lot of people poke holes at it the way they will, even with something like Goldfinger. Like Goldfinger is is we, we've sort of it's the gold standard of Bond films. Yep classic a lot but but still a lot of people say well, yeah but I, I don't really like this part or, or the plot doesn't really work or the locations don't really work i don't really hear people poking a lot of holes at for Marshall with love no um now i will say i did not too long ago have a debate with he calvin did. dyson yes and he just doesn't like it at all there you go right I mean, there's and, and then <laughs> and then i thought ah oh calvin yeah let me give oh, you a you. hug and then all of a sudden, I read on his channel the mm. comments, and I think it was mostly coming from younger people. And, right. and Calvin's, you know, uh, in his in his early 30s. This was early 30s and under, and boom, 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 boom. Mm. Uh, boring, you know, all over the place. Uh, characters drawn out. Like, I mean, the comments just mm. kept coming. So I do think if you had a swath of potentially younger Bond fans here, right. they would say, Joe and David, yep, sophomore outing, not as good as really? Dr. No, because they see Dr. No as this bombastic classic. Mm. You know, this yeah. thing that is kind of, you know, which is Dr. No is literally right here. Um, it's kind of untouchable, yeah. which just floors me because to me, even if From Russia With Love wasn't a Bond movie, to yeah. me it would be a cinematic treasure. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I, I think that um, 
In fact, I'm, I'm kind of having flashbacks of your conversation with Calvin because mm. I, I kind of find that... He said it was kind of a ripoff of Hitchcock. Uh, right, uh, to which I would say... It, it, right, it's interesting. And I guess I guess if you are a Hitchcock fan the way he is, and I, I think most people are fans, but he's a little more more hardcore, mm-hmm. um, then you're going to look at this and, and see the differences between Hitchcock and From Rush With Love. Yes. To the casual fan, I think you can watch these two films and see the similarities. You could, you could see... Oh yeah, this one is actually similar to Hitchcock. So mm-hmm. suddenly it 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 propels and and you know gets a little higher on your list. I it guess. does, it does. But but here's here's the reality for me. Our premise about the sophomore gets a little bit clunky. To mm. me, I think the franchise owners took what they did on Doctor No, and whether it was better writing, a better understanding of Bond, Connery more comfortable, which mm. happens a lot in the second movie. Yeah. The Bond actor gets more comfortable. To me, this is an improvement over Doctor No. As much as mm. I have a big heart for Doctor No with locations and yeah. it just being this pure classic and the start, yeah. to me, from Russia with Love, if I was put in hell and Satan said, <laughs> you got to watch one Bond movie for the rest of your life, I yeah. wouldn't be upset if you put this up on the... On the TV, yeah, no, and that oh, analogy. that's that's sure, absolutely. In fact, I'll 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 go on record and say I I oh. feel like for a long time I was one of those who would say, yeah, I I I, I like Rush would love like everybody else, and I kind of respect it for what it is, but it, I I never think to watch it or it just kind of doesn't grab me. But then in the last few years, possibly from just just rewatching and reviewing all the films. I kind of got the From Russia With Love bug, and I started to realize, wow, this is pretty damn good. And honestly, I think at one point, for, for Dr. No would probably have been just above From Russia on my list, but but it kind of went uh, just a little higher. Because mm-hmm. I cause I think, like you said, it kind of gives you a little more. You know, Dr. No is a yeah. great first outing, and, and honestly, that's one of the ones for a long time I would just sort of pick it up off the shelf and throw it in and just watch it because I just enjoyed it for what it is and, and it's it's kind of in the time of Fleming, etc. Uh, then I kind of got this From Russia With Love bug and, and Love Bug. Um, oh, that's good. It, 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 and suddenly I was watching it more and more and I really yeah. did appreciate it. So, yeah, I, I just kind of love it now. I, I do too. And, and by the way, let's take a moment to come back to the tropes of James Bond. Mm. You know, location-wise, to me, the spy intrigue of these locations, even though Jamaica's beautiful, yeah. of course, we all have a love for that, from from a danger, yeah. from something around every corner yes. and the sneakiness of it, yeah. from Russia with love, this is a spy movie. It's yeah. not a vacation movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, to me, it sends it up. And then the bad guy. Yeah. I mean, Dr. No, you meet in the last 25 minutes. Is mm-hmm. he good? Is he bad? Fine. But... I mean, the people in here, like Rosa Klebb yeah. and Red Grant, yeah. Yeah. can can you hold a candle to that? Right, right. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, honestly, and it's funny, too. I, I, I kind of circle back to my original, okay, here was the theory. Does it hit a sophomore speed bump, right? Is, is, it, is it the sophomore slump? And I, I would say no, but yes in some ways. Hmm. Because only because, and again, in this particular yeah. case, I am not at all suggesting that because it's the sophomore, it makes it a, a poorer film. I would say almost the opposite. Interesting. Where I, I think the purity of this film, I mean, this is pure Fleming. And, and, and yes. again, we're not kind of bogged down yet with typical Bond tropes. You know, we're not trying to work in a tuxedo scene, a martini scene, all that. Two and a half women. All that stuff. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. We're just, it's pure storytelling at this point. Yeah. So I, I think just the final product is 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 fantastic, probably because it's 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 so new and fresh. Um, and again, not bogged down in, in the, the need to haves in the Bond films. On the other hand, you can sort of take that whole argument and just put it a little differently and say, right, but we still don't have the things that make Bond Bond yet. It, it kind of takes us till Goldfinger before we start to see some of those typical tropes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because of that, yeah, I suppose you can call this the sophomore outing where it doesn't really have its feet yet, where right. we don't know the, the direction that we want this actor or this yeah. Bond to go in. So the sophomore terminology that we put up as the premise is not a negative here. Right. It's it's kind of almost like part of the machine of working out what we now know, yes. which, which could actually be seen 
as a little bit guilty. Like we're kind of mm. getting yeah. the same sausage with just different spices. Sure. But from Russia with Love was kind of its own. It was still where its own entity. Yeah. I, I, right. Absolutely. I, I I think this is sort of an unadulter unadulterated unadulterated um, unfiltered Adultery. unprocessed. It's not pasteurized or homogenized yet. Oh. It's kind of pure bond. Yeah. So I think with that no. in mind, yeah, just a hundred percent pure bond. Prime cut. So for that reason, I think it just works spectacularly. But, uh, but, right, and again, I think even as we go forward talking about these films, it, it's not necessarily saying it's a bad film because it's got that sophomore struggle. Yeah. Uh, it, it could very well so, I have those, those situations and maybe comes out on top. I'll argue that going forward, not so much. I think, I think that struggle is pretty real and I think it does hurt the films. Um, but again, the idea of this is not to say... Not the way we would talk about the last films. Are right. they? Did they leave on a bad note? This one is just more like: Do you feel the struggle? Do you do, yeah. you, do you feel them struggling to figure out where this bond is going to go? So, so let's play a little sophomore Bond film game. Mm. We'll both do this, and I haven't given this much thought. Yep. So, and you've given it no thought because you even know what's coming. Uh, being such a great movie, mm. there are always things in Bond films, sophomore or otherwise, that you might improve upon mm. from Russia with love what's the one area or thing that you would improve upon to turn it from an incredible film to just an unbelievable film mm. see that's see that's a good question and that kind of goes back to what I said about earlier about how I kind of feel like it's it's so hard to poke any holes in this film I do you want me to go first like, since I thought please, of the question yeah sure absolutely so this is because it's unfair to you I didn't give you any time for me, for example, I do think this film has more endings than The Lord of the Rings. You know, it kind yeah. of ends, yeah. and then it ends again, and then just when we think it ends, uh, you know, the maid shows up. and then, right. like, But then, yes. they're on a, then they're in a boat in Venice with yeah. the film, and it's like, a part of me thinks that they maybe could have conjugated that. Like the, the boat trip where he's exploding all the gas. Mm. Love it. Classic scene. Wouldn't want you to do anything with it. Don't touch my yeah. from Russia with love. Right, right. But if I was on the cutting room floor yeah. and said, how do I make this thing tight yeah. and have a grandiose ending, right. I might snip back a piece or two. Yeah. That, yes. And I, I probably will have to con 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 concur that that is probably the, if if there's a flaw, it does have multiple endings. And and it's it's it's, it's it becomes more of a case of tying up all the loose ends than just having a climax. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, the climax is the fight on the train. Exactly. You know? Yes. I mean, there's no yes. big explosions, but that really, to me, is the climax of the film. Yes. And, right, the rest does feel like, well, we didn't see anything blow up yet, so let's go do a boat chase. Oh, Rosa Klebb had that shoe we saw. We yeah. need to do that bit here. Plus, it was in the book. Um, so, right, so we're just kind of going back and tying up all the loose, yeah. straggly ends. Well, what about you have... You have everybody's going to be like, stop rewriting Bond. Um, <laughs> what if you had the fight scene? You had the train Bond sweating away, and suddenly, um, you know, Rosa Klebb comes in as the maid to do up the hotel room because it's a mess. Mm. Then you have the knife fight, but it ends right there on the train. You know, Rosa Klebb dead. She shot him, yeah. and they're in each other's arms, and he says something quippy, and then boom, scene. Right. As opposed to you have. All this other stuff afterwards yeah, that yeah. are these just kind of like these add-ons. Yeah, yeah. It, it's I I totally agree. I mean, Frank. I mean, I I almost feel like it, you could have just had if you really felt this movie needed an explosion, you could have just put Grant and and Cleb on the boat with everybody else. Maybe the whole mm. bunch of them. Maybe, maybe you know um, the whole yacht. You know, you have Blofeld on his yacht following along. I think that's or called around. Thunderball. I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's a different movie. Yeah, or have the train explode. If you need an explosion, yeah, sure, it goes yeah, off of a cliff. Something, right? I mean, it's, and it is funny as, as we're talking about. It, it's like, oh yeah, then there's the helicopter. I mean, there's a whole bunch of oh, things that's that right. happened after the, the yeah, after after the the fight. We need the a train. helicopter. We need a train. Right. We Just need a boat. All of these things happen. Yeah. We need another boat. Yeah. At the very end, because yeah. one boat's not enough. Right. Right. It's a lot. Yeah. But but again, it, it does. It, it, it's also, I guess, if you're a Fleming purist, you still kind of. I mean, again, the, what I love about the first, especially the first two, is that they're they are really doing, like I don't even think they are thinking in terms of a a James Bond franchise, you know, a character that's oh, going to no. go on forever. No. They're they're still just doing, you know, they're they're interpreting novels into films. Yeah. 
So we still kind of get that pure Fleming. So it's almost like you start to monkey with it. It's like, you know, now I'm monkeying with Fleming. And now I'm kind of feeling a little, little nervous about doing that. So mm. and, and I think you just bring up a really great point. Who knows that the franchise owners, I doubt it, were thinking like, oh, we're going to have, uh, you know, 20 more films after this. Right. They were yeah. probably thinking like, hey, if we can if we can do one more or maybe mm. like three, wouldn't it be great to have a trilogy? Right. Or whatever. Yeah. I mean, sure. but but my gosh, this is yeah. to me the Empire Strikes Back of the Bond franchise. Yeah. It Absolutely. is that middle yeah. film. If they ended it, you know, with a third film, I would have been like this, this one topped it off. Yeah. I, absolutely, yeah. I, right. If, if they stopped at three, I, I think most yeah. people probably say that. Well, that was the one where they hit their their, their stride. Yeah. And, so, and by the way, as much as like we played that little game of rewriting, we don't want to rewrite it. Yeah. And <laughs> it's nothing like rewriting a certain slide whistle in another film. <laughs> but uh, is, is we'll that one of the that. ones we're going to be talking oh, about? It's, it's the oh, next one. Oh Joe. my goodness! Should we prepare for that one? I, I think we should. All right. Well, because we knew this was going to be a gush fest. Hey, Right, yeah, I, that's the, the, right. That's the thing. Yeah, like, I, I almost feel like even as people are kind of coming into this, you, you guys really doing a video where you're gonna try to try to rip apart? Yeah, yeah. Get those comments ready. <laughs> yeah, it's not Absolutely. gonna work. It's not gonna work. All right. All right. So um, we're gonna we're gonna just kind of change our mindset. We'll see you in the next video, I guess. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Hey, who are you? Uh, Joe Darlington, being James Bond. David Zerutsky from the Bond Experience. See you soon. Take care. Bye.